And with that, I welcome you to the first ever episode. Um, in the first prologue, I've talked about that I wanted to make a um, little deep dive into my vessels. I didn't want to do it in the first episode because I wanted to talk about the important characters. And those smaller vessels, they're mostly not that important. For example, Bishop Siegbert of Hasefeld. Hmm. I mean, they can change a bit, but they cannot join any factions. Uh, so yeah, but I will still look at them. He's a scholarly theologian. The scholarly theologian is a wise and well-read with a deep understanding of philosophy and theology. He's also a novice diplomat. This character has minor training in the art of diplomacy. He's content. Content characters are satisfied with their lot in life. They make loyal vessels, but they're unsuited for, to intrigue. He's shy. Mm -hmm. He's honest. Uh huh. And he's charitable. Yeah. How would I personally look at him? We are a very religious guy, as I said in the last episode. A very. But we only think in a religious, righteous way, not in a, you know, human, righteous way. And he personally loves me. He's even loyal to his vessel, to us. Loyal to the vessel, right. Loyal to the leash of Harsefeld. I would personally say we like him because, well, he loves us and we find it respectful that he likes us, uh, loves us so much. The other one is Amtmann Luder von Ottendorf. Eruded, so he is well read, shy, cruel and patient. Now I see we don't really like, oh well, we don't really have a big opinion about him. Yeah, he is just a good marshal, but he could also be my spy master. He's a very suited spy master with 20. And there is Hans. And Hans is not that good, actually. Hmm. Yeah, he's also st our steward Michael. He's lustful, greedy, patient, and eroded. A very, very good steward. He's also quick. And Midas touched. Yeah, he's a genius. We need to keep him as the uh, steward of Nordmark. Um, yeah, those all will um, disappear in a second. Now, I want to invite a soldier. Lima van Ottendorf has arrived at your court, ready for employment. Okay, excellent. I want to make Lima my marshal. An ambitious guy, gluttonous and charitable, a formidable fighter, a brilliant strate strategist and a siege leader. A very suitable guy for that job, I must say. Um, oh yeah, we can now make that one back in here. Is there even anything that I need? I mean, I could build up Stade, but could also just build up Salzwedel. Let's build up Stade. Um, for the general direction, uh, let's... For example, make the taxes higher in here, make you this. I mean, his opinion is already all very, very good, so you can hunt apostates. Yeah. Mm. We could better our relations with the Duke of Saxony. I, in my own di um, the general direction, I want to have him as my ally. Also, what I want to do is arrange a marriage between me and his daughter Hedwig. The only daughter, actually, who is ready to marriage. Oh, yeah, he also has Ida, but she has to be... Um, what is it called again? Betro betrothed. Betrothed. <laughs> no, she hates us. She's a just woman. She's gregarious, craven, and paranoid, and also lustful. But she hates us because of our hunchback. Well, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Um... Yeah, it doesn't, I don't really care about it, I think. It doesn't really mean much. I mean, she also has an ugly sister, so <laughs> she doesn't She doesn't have anything to say. Um, now, Earth of your dynasty. Yeah, we have to do something about that, which is also where I will put my focus on. Where is it? Well, firstly, get married and then getting a son. 
and I will put my focus firstly on family because we are already 32. Now our biological clock will be not turned off. Well, will not just run out um, in a very short period for a short time, but still, we have to make an effort to get some children out of us. Otherwise, this guy, our well cousin, I think, yeah, somewhat cousin. Oh boy, uh, how is this called again? Kinsman. He's my grandfather, so he's my great uncle, my um, great cousin. Something, something. Of, uh, he's uh, one of my kinsmen from Katlenburg. He's right now located in Oldenburg, so he would inherit the title, which I, of course, don't want to. I want to continue my dynasty. So we have to marry this woman, but this is, of course, a purely um, diplomatic uh, marriage. And we will then make a little alliance with Bernhard II of Saxony to maybe even use him to get our stuff back. Claim on Brandenburg or Magdeburg would be better. Yeah, to get Magdeburg back. That would be great. Because he has... It, yeah, it shows that he just has 400 troops, but he, but he has 1,786 troops. 86? No, 68 troops in disposal because of his vessels that can help him. So yeah, we will use that against him. This will be our first course of action. Yeah, no heir of dynasty, title loss in succession, ruler is also unmarried, we can press the Euro claims, special title action, approve elective nomination, decline elective nomination. As you received at least one vote for the success of the Holy Roman Empire, you may choose to approve or decline your nomination to the Holy Roman Empire. This decision will last for a lifetime. Yes. I didn't know that this existed, but this plays into my hand because I don't want to be the next emperor of the Holy Roman Empire because I want want to as firstly fix my own stuff. So we're going to decline the nomination. Okay, and we also have to self-nominate, but we do that in a second because I firstly want to do the uh, court physician. Um, oh, Rikval. Uh, I thought this was my bishop, but it wasn't. And my designated regent... Mm. Oh yeah, we also have this girl. We'll talk about her in a second. She's very, very interesting. We also make Siegbert. Let's make Siegbert my designated regent. Commander. Let's put Luda in there. And court tutor. Michael. Or Michael can do this stuff. Okay, I don't want to put any more in that. Because we have one very interesting guest at our court. And it is this woman, Gisela Heinrich's daughter, a woman with a weak claim on Bavaria, actually, um, but I cannot declare any war. So yeah, very interesting. The last Louis Dolfinger, the former dynasty which ruled the Holy Roman Empire, but yeah, this dynasty is now closely to be dying out. She's the last member and both of her do um, children um, have died because she was married to King Apat Eastern, known as Stefan the Holy. <clears throat> and we can pick a focus for Vicho von Osnabrück, a little nobleman who lives at our court. Yeah, let's make him a commander because I actually need one. Hopefully he can gather something from Lima. And yeah, with that I also need to do a little I don't even need to do it in any law. We already fixed that. Mm, what I need to do, though, is success, nominate a successor. Now, the two who are right now nominated is Markgraf Ulrich of Karnolia. And I see why. He's a content guy. He's a bit shy. But he's honest, patient, and vigilant. And a brilliant strategist. So I'm just going to go with my fellow guys and nominate him. Where is he? Ulrich Markgrave of Coronelia. I'm going to vote for him, yeah. Alright, so let the game run. What was that? Bong Dong? Ah, yes. I know part of the Imperial Code of the Holy Roman Empire. As you can hear. Um, yeah, this is another mod that I put in. The court of the Holy Roman Empire is ever filled with squabbling nobles seeking to further empower themselves within the empire, whilst others struggle to strengthen the empire itself. 
It falls to the Emperor to carefully manage this aggregation of interest, lest civil war engulfs the Empire. Um, yes, and we are right now a hair in this. There are four, um, four steps, four things. You either are a Höfling, Herr, Herzog or Kaiser. And with that you can get other um, extra little points. This is just something we can do on the side to maybe get some missions and just level up in here. And you get some little powers, for example, force a favor or choose a court focus. Mm, we get right now make this vice reality hereditary. May enable the decision to turn a duchy vice reality into a hereditary duchy if the society's influence is high enough. Or introduce to the Imperial Court, we can then introduce our child. Um, yeah, and we will get some missions from that, which will be cool to just have it on the side. I don't think I put it into the um, collection. I will have to see. And we will get married. Hedwig and Margrave Lothar Udo II are getting married. We can collect a royal aid to, to pay for the ceremonies. Now we're not going to do that because we are temperate. We don't want to do that. So no, people respect their wealth. You know, we are not, not someone who craves money. Now we need a son. Margrave Lothar Udo II of Nordmark fulfilled the ambition to get married. And we will see how we can get ma um, get a child from our beautiful Hedwig Bernhard's daughter. Aha, uh -huh, new prince elector of the empire. With the Duchy of Franconia previously held by the former elector Emperor Heinrich III. I think he's calling out the Duchy of Bavaria. Falling into the demands of the elector Duke Rudolf of Swabia from Corner no longer remains part of the empire's electorate without sacrificing its integrity. Ah, he gave the Duchy of Franconia away, the Emperor, for some reason, hmm, if he wants to. After much discussion and careful negotiation among the peers of the Empire, a consensus has largely been reached that the holder of the Duchy of Bavaria shall become an elector in perpetuity. Duke Otto II of the House of Wittelsbach, by reason of his standing and the prestige of his house among the great princes of the realm, stands foremost among those worthy to receive the right and privilege to elect the Emperor of the Romans. It has been rightly decided. So the Duke Otto II of Bavaria from the von Wittelsbach family can now choose an emperor. I mean, rightfully so. Are we someone in that? No, we are right now not an electorate. I mean, it makes sense. We didn't become actually an electorate until we became the Duchy of Brandenburg, meaning we incorporated out of this area. Also the um, before mentioned Albrecht de Bea made this possible. He made out of the Mark Graviate of Brandenburg the um, Duchy of Brandenburg and with that uh, the, as we call it in German Kurfürstentum of, Germ uh, of Brandenburg. So the electorate of Brandenburg. So yeah it is quite oh yeah it's quite historical and also there are new factions together with HIP. Um, and with these factions, we can now um, also make it on the, a bit on the side, just a bit of more factionism. Now, I personally want to found my own faction, the Tradition Faction. The Tradition Faction strives for piety and supremacy of religion, and we will be the leader of that. Now, this faction system is different than the normal faction system, in that we don't strive for something for example a normal faction normally strives for example for um, getting someone nominated as the new emperors putting someone on the throne maybe even increasing the power of the of the of the council mm, these factions are more interest groups meaning the glory faction in here they strive for prestige and spoils of war so they want to get the emperor to go into war do glorious things doing prestigious things and they are disloyal when he isn't prestigious and the prosperity faction does something similar they want to get cash basically they want to, the empire flourish and our faction the tradition factions strives for religious integrity and for a religiousness in the entire country this is of course very very fitting because we are pious and zealous we of course want to uh, make religion a very big part of us. Count Heinrich of Daxbos has rejected the proposal. Yeah, those are just some smaller things. I maybe even have to um, redo the factionism of low priority messages. Because, ah, we became the High Almora. This, of course, brings some prestige for us. 
as the high Almora, yeah, 1.06, so of course it's great. I think I just made a high priority match just go away, sadly. My leash, my mission, mission to Lüneburg has far been a success. Due my visit to the court of Duke Bernard II of Saxony, I've seemed to manage to make him understand what a benevolent, uh, benevolent and peaceful ruler you really are, and he sends his regards. Your humble chancellor, Bishop Siegbert. Great. This, of course, makes him very much more liking us. Oh, yeah. Uh, it appears that we... Just as diplomacy and only the titles and offices are made by the ruler. So we have to take the council uh, a lot into, into concessions. Attacking Holy Saxon War for Nordmark 1? Wait, what are you doing? It appears that he wants to take our stuff. That is of course not good. But on the other hand, yeah, he's going to be defended. Holy war, and he makes also a holy war. Yeah, he's going to be defended against all the Slavic nations, and um, at least the Slavic um, believing nations. Yeah, probably not going to help him in that regard. I mean, the Duchy of Pomerania can help him in here. On the other hand, when he right now conquers Nordmark, that would not be great. I think we also have to intervene here and call for a holy war for Nordmark and call him in. Oh, God. This is a hard decision at the start. I mean, how does it look troop-wise? Not perfect. But we can use his troops. Let's just try it out. Let's just call out a war for an, an holy war. To regain integrity of our um, de jure territory. And can I call him into war? Call to arms? No, I can not. Ah, well, we have to wait. We have to see how he does. And then probably just hope and pray that we get this stuff back. Otherwise, yeah, that would be really bad if he now conquers this stuff. Ugh. And we have to disable uh, that notification. I mean, I'm going to try to take my stuff back. At least the cap. Oh, uh, God. Okay. <laughs> we got on our first fight. Even we ourselves. Oh, God. This could go very, very badly. And our army. Let's go with heavy infantry. So that they get a little boost. Yeah, but no. We lose this battle badly. Damn it. That would be really, really bad. Well, maybe the Casa Spider also goes away as soon as he wins the war. Yeah, maybe that wasn't that intelligent to go into war with him. Well, I thought then this Casa Spider would switch over to us. Ah. Well, there are the first crisis. And he was also. Oh, he was also Nordmark. Ugh. Yeah, well, we have to wait until he gets his fair share. I mean, can I join your war? I can join your war, but my council doesn't want to. Why? We're already busy fighting another war. Yeah, this is... Our, yeah, well, then we have to, of course, apply to that. We even have one member in our little thing. The Count Odonna of Asti, of the Almarici El family, uh, family. Huh? Oh, well, I think we might lost this one. Oh, 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 he goes in, he goes in. Oh, God, did he? Does he? Yeah, he does. Let's also help him in this little endeavor. Ah, great. Great, great, great. Okay. Now, we, of course, didn't win this fight. But what we could do is nothing. <laughs> we can't do nothing. We could just wait and pray that we don't get killed. Uh, oh god. Yeah, let's just retreat. I mean, hopefully he just wins this war by now. Yeah, we get dragged into another fight. Let's just retreat. I don't want to lose this and then die. And the Emperor created a new title. The Duchy of Westphalia. Interesting. 
Very, very interesting. Um, yeah, let's, let's just hope, hope and pray that he wins his war. And to the level-headed smarty lotter Udo, peace be with you. With the support of my council, I decree that there shall be peace in all my realm. You have three months to end your conflicts. I don't have any internal conflicts, only external. Yeah, this was a total failure. Ah, <laughs> oh, goddammit. Well, I hoped that this would then change, that our Casas Belli becomes the entire Casas Belli, but of course it doesn't. And with that, the rest of Nordmark, our entire, well, rest territory, goes over to the Dutch of Saxony, to the Duke of Saxony, and hmm, he could overtake our stuff. Ooh. That would be bad. Pope Stephanus VIII has died and has been succeeded by Pope Hadrianus the Fourth. I completely forgot. We have to, of course, take also into uh, account the Pope. He would be a very, very, very influential character for us. So, Pope Hadrianus IV of the Demon Ferrato family, a Lombard, he's a paranoid character, gregarious, eruded, and ambitious, and also a hunchback. So, yeah, we find him very, very uh, sympathetic to us. We like our current Pope, because he's also a hunchback. Now, paranoid is, of course, not great, but he's also tall and eruded. Hmm. Okay, now, now he has to win the war, and this entire thing ends. Right? I don't want to... I mean, it wouldn't be that bad. It wouldn't, yeah, uh, he's winning the war. Let's just surrender then. I don't want my entire country to be sacked. I mean, we are a bit in debt, but... It will fix itself after some time. Oh, but God damn it. Yeah, that was a... That was a bad move at the start. Uh, now... Uh, oh! No. <laughs> For a second I had a little bit of hope, but no. All of it is now part of Saxony, and he can now usurp my title. He can now usurp my title. Oh boy, and we could then the, uh, just become a vassal and just the, well, Duke of Altmark. That would not be good. It's a good tradition to have some gossips around a pregnant woman in order to keep her calm and distracted from the turbulence of this delicate time in her life. As Hedwig hunts... Oh, she's is pregnant. I didn't even notice that. It's my duty to provide her with the support she needs. I'm sorry, we don't have any money, darling. We have... You have to wait. Oh, Uto from us even left our little court faction. Do we even have someone in our faction? We have. Now it's Bernardo of Padua, of the De Conti family, a Venetian. A Venetian who is the Duke, a Count of Padua. And we have right now Realm Peace. Well. Well, well, well. Um, yeah, we need some sort of different... I think he just made a new faction. Well, well, we just need another... Thank you for interrupting me again. <laughs> Another ally to struck down, strike down the Duke of Westphalia now. Did he just destroy his former title? Why did he do that? Hmm. Well. But he stayed a elective, right? Yeah. Ah oh, well, and a daughter was born to Mark Refluter Udo of Nordmark and Mark Gravin Hedwig of Nordmark, named Reginlind. Reginlind, an imbecile. Huh. Not that great. Well, we need another child. And also, I need to say goodbye to you. And we will see us in the next episode. Until then.